Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. Now, you may have noticed that there's been quite a bit of news recently about an increase in cases of cancer amongst young people. And you may be wondering what has happened recently that could be causing it. Could it be a new pharmacological intervention, for instance? In this video, Cindy and I are going to go back to the science and see if we can answer that question. And just to be clear, it isn't just news outlets that are reporting the increase in cancers in the young. It is also in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. For instance, this paper here was published in Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. It's entitled, Is Early Onset Cancer an Emerging Global Epidemic? Current Evidence and Future Implications. But look at the date. It was published in September 2022. We all know what happened the year before, don't we? And what they have done in this paper is they've looked at the average annual percentage change in various types of cancer by country. And they are specifically looking at what they refer to as early onset cancer which they define as cancer occurring in those between 20 and 49 years of age. Now, that chart was a bit busy, so I'll just show you a blow up of breast cancer and colorectal cancer. You can see that the countries where there has been an increase in one or both of these cancers include Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Korea, Sweden, England and Wales and the USA. And we all know what those countries have in common, don't we? Before you answer that question, I should just draw your attention to the figure caption. The data is looking at increases between 2002 and 2012. So no, it doesn't have anything to do with COVID vaccines. But there are some papers that have more up-to-date figures on cancer in young people. For instance, this study looks at global trends in incidence, death, burden and risk factors of early onset cancer from 1990 to 2019. Early onset cancer is defined as cancer below the age of 50. And the global incidence increased by 79.1% and the number of early onset cancer deaths increased by 27.7% between 1990 and 2019. And this study is looking at patterns in cancer incidence amongst young people younger than 50 years in the US from 2010 to 2019. And again, they see substantial increases in cancer incidence in those under 50. In terms of causes of the increase, it's multifactorial. This figure is from the first paper I presented from Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology, and it shows a number of the likely culprits. They include environmental pollutants, a trend towards increasing height, obesity and overweight, type 2 diabetes, physical inactivity, a Western-style diet, which is defined as a diet high in saturated fats, red meat, processed meat, sugar and ultra-processed foods and low in fruits, vegetables, whole grains and fibre. And also there's an increase in sugar, sweetened beverage intake. Per capita alcohol consumption has also generally increased, in particular in women. Also for women, Ajak Menak which is when you get your first period, has decreased. There and there's also been an increase in oral contraceptive use and a decrease in women having children. So cancer incidence in young people has been increasing for a number of decades. And there are a number of different causes, none of which are the COVID vaccine because the increase predates it. But hang on, Professor Angus Dalgleish, who is an oncologist, is claiming otherwise. 
Well, I guess we should listen to his reasoning. Angus, let's let's just dive straight in. Um, how prevalent are cancer rates at the moment? And I guess the important question is, um, you know, how much have they been increasing and when did this increase start? Well, it's a very good question because they, they have been increasing for some time, particularly amongst the younger people and particularly with regards bowel cancer. Uh, this has been going up the last few years and I've known people who, uh, friends of mine have contacted me and I, it's not about them, it's about their adult children who've got bowel cancer. I mean, it was, I've had two or three of these. And so this, this has been going on for some time. And what is the cause? I mean, they have to say the only major thing that's changed is probably diet and food. So there's a lot, lot of speculation. Is it due to something that processed food, uh, some, some chemicals in it, etc.? But there's no doubt that there's been a big change in the last two years where this slow increase that was coming up has started to take off. And the last two or three years, they've really increased quite dramatically around the world. And that was from an interview on the Freeman Report. So first of all, Professor Dalgleish shared some anecdotes. I thought this was quite curious because Dalgleish has previously explained how anecdotes are unreliable. It's in this excellent article here entitled, What Every Young Person Who Fears the Jab Must Be Told. Vaccine expert Angus Dalgleish dismantles beliefs that have been seen, that sorry, that have seen rates stall among the 18 to 30s. And in this article, he debunks a lot of vaccine misinformation. It's well worth a read in full. However, I'll just read you the bit about anecdotes. When we hear of people becoming ill or even dying after a vaccine jab, it's easy to jump to conclusions about side effects. It's much harder to take a rational view and accept that coincidence plays strange tricks. Part of my work as an oncologist involves developing and trialling potential cancer vaccines. A few years ago, I was due to give a patient an injection of an, of an experimental new drug in the hope that it would prevent complications in the progress of his disease. The vaccine was manufactured in America and sent by air. When it arrived at Heathrow, customs officials refused to release it immediately. I went to bed that night cursing the red tape. Next morning, my patient was dead. He had suffered a catastrophic bleed on the brain, which was both tragic and unexpected. If I had administered the vaccine as scheduled, his death would have meant the complete cancellation of the trial. No doctor would ever have dared the risk again. We would all have assumed that the drug, in some way that could not be discovered, had fatal side effects. So we'll take Professor Dalgleish's advice and ignore the anecdotes. But he does seem to be implying that he also has some data to back up his claims. Now, he mentioned later in the interview that he was planning to publish an article in The Conservative Woman elaborating on his claims. So I decided to go looking for the data there. This is the article here the COVID booster cancer time bomb. And in the article, he makes this claim. Recently, the American Cancer Society, ACS, has warned of a surge in new cancer cases in the US this last year of over 2 million, with many of these cases occurring in younger patients. Indeed, the chief scientific officer of the ACS, William Dahat, announced in addition that cancers were presenting with more aggressive disease and larger tumours at the time of diagnosis, especially in younger patients. Well, that sounds very convincing, but let's just check the reference he provided for the claim. American Cancer Society annual report shows cancer mortality still declining, but cancer incidence is projected to top 2 million. So it didn't surge to over 2 million last year. It is 
projected to go over 2 million this year and mortality is declining. In fact, if we go to the report, we see that the most up-to-date data on cancer incidence is from 2020. So there is no data from the US showing an increase in cancers in the young since the vaccine rollout. There is no data at all. But there is data from the NHS in England, and it shows diagnoses up to the end of December 2023 although the data has slightly lower completeness from September 2023. Let's have a look. This chart shows all new cancer diagnoses in England from January 2019 to December 2023. There is a very obvious reduction in diagnoses in 2020 as the pressures from COVID interrupted screening services followed by a slight increase in diagnoses once things got back to normal, but hardly a massive spike. But Professor Dalgleish did say the increase was in young people. So let's look at that. So the 0 to 49-year-old age group is the maroon line. As you can see, there is a very small dip in 2020, and besides that, it's pretty much flat. So contrary to Dalglish's claim, there is no increase in cancer cases in the young. And it makes sense that the dip would be smaller for those under 50 because a lot of screening programs are aimed at those over 50. Hmm, perhaps Dalglish meant that young people were presenting with more advanced cancers. Nope. This chart shows a proportion of diagnoses that were either stage one or stage two, which means not advanced. For the zero to 49 year old age group, which is again in maroon, it's close to a straight horizontal line. It was 68% in January 2019 and 69% in December 2023. So no increase in the proportion of advanced cancers being diagnosed in the young either. Now, Professor Dalgleish did specifically mention colorectal cancer in the video clip that I showed. So maybe he just meant there was a huge increase in cancers in young people there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not seeing a massive increase in new cancer diagnoses of colorectal cancer in young people here. But it is clear that young people have always been diagnosed with colorectal cancer, albeit at much lower rates than older people. And we also know from the studies that we previously looked at that there had been an increasing trend in colorectal cancer in young people that predated the pandemic. So basically, Professor Dalgleish has presented anecdotes that aren't supported by data. So in summary, increases in cancer in young people under 50 have been seen over the last few decades. There are a number of reasons for this, including unhealthy diets and sedentary lifestyles. But contrary to the claims of Professor Dalgleish and many anti-vaxxers, there has been no acceleration since the vaccine rollout. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you, because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy a treat. Do you want a little treat, Cindy? There we go. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.